Hey folks, welcome to Video Blog. Day three, it's the morning of March 8th, 7 a.m. The city is scheduled to come into Camp 83 behind me in about an hour here. Uh, a lot of folks here, probably 30 to 40 folks on scene protesting, uh, holding signs, and uh, mainstream media is on the scene as well, Fox and ABC News. Uh, so, we'll see what happens as the story unravels. The plan right now is we're just gonna be holding our signs, trying to get attention from everybody uh, passing through. This is not about Camp 83. This is about housing. This is about jobs that pay a livable wage. Yeah. This is about health care. Yeah. I yes. agree. Yes. Yes. I agree with the city shutting down Camp 83. I agree with it. In fact, shut them all down. Because I don't believe anybody woke up one morning and said to themselves, oh, I don't live underneath a bridge. I don't need affordable housing. I can sleep with the mud in the cold ground. Send these people home. There's 4,000 people out here on the street. The city only provides 2,000 beds. Do the math. There's 2,000 people that need somewhere to go. We are going to send City Hall a message today that they will never forget. So the city's beginning to clear out the camp behind me. Five trash trucks have pulled up here. The final hours of Camp 83 have begun. My name is Tracy Jones. Okay, and you're a former resident of Camp 83, right? Yes, I am a former camp. Okay, so can you tell me about what it was like living there? Um, actually it was, well, to put it in just like brief terms, it was hell. Uh, because of the fact that I've been there uh, for almost about 15 months. Um, so that's through two winters. <laughs> Um, through the hurricane, through all of that. Um, but yeah, it was very difficult. Very difficult. Very cold, you know, a lot of cold nights. A lot of cold nights. Have you sought, uh, I guess, other city programs, like uh, homeless shelters? Yes, I actually have. Um, I was a resident over at the Cold Blue before they moved to this new location. Um, I was there for about three months. Um, and while I was there, I experienced um, a various number of things. Um, I was sexually harassed by the residents um, as well as the, um, um, the staff there. Um, there's a lot of theft that goes on there. I ha I've had medication stolen. I've had money stolen, uh, clothing. I mean, pretty much anything that you have there of any value or if somebody sees that they want, they'll just take, you know, because they're in, you know, a bad situation too. So it's a lot of theft going on there. Can I just start off with your name? Sure, it's Matt Quinlan with Housing Our Neighbors. We've been really looking at the city policies and the city actions and trying to identify discrepancies between the two, um, namely with, with the, the lack of subsidies for affordable housing at the same time that we're subsidizing um, the hotels, the Hilton, we're paying off their debts. Um, we're subsidizing the Lexington sewer block. We're, we're waiving the requirements for affordable housing units in those new developments. Um, it wasn't until the eviction came and that, that we really started working with the residents and raising awareness um, that more community members became aware and community groups were able to plug in. Um, and sort of at the 11th hour, the residents were able to find temporary transitional housing. Um, but that was, that was not a result of the city's efforts. That was, if anything, a result of the city's you know, scotch taping signs to the wall saying they're going to evict everyone at 8 a.m. this morning, which is what they've done and what they're doing right now. Housing is a human right! 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 Housing is not shelters! Houses, not shelters! Okay. To start off with uh, your name? Okay, Lisa Klingenmeyer. And what do you do? I'm uh, an advocate with Housing Our Neighbors. So this is the city shelter. It's called the Housing Resource Center. Uh, but in actuality, all it is is an emergency shelter. Um, it only has uh, under 300 beds, and we know that there's over 4,000 individuals on any night that experience homelessness. So it's not really providing all the space that we need. And even then, it's an emergency shelter. Um, we know it costs about $900 a month to house someone in an emergency shelter. So it's a really expensive way to continue the problem of homelessness. Homelessness. So we would argue that it's a much better uh, spending of our resources if we were to just invest in affordable housing instead of paying to have uh, huge shelters sitting on corners. Right. Housing, not shelters! Housing, not shelters! Housing, not shelters! We are only going to lay our hands. The city doesn't care. They have not provided the answers. They tell us to wait 10 years for the county home. Housing, not shelters! Housing is a human right! 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 Housing is
Housing is a human right. Fight, fight, fight. Housing is a human right. Fight, fight, fight. Housing is a human right. We're about to deliver hearts to the mayor and to her director of human services. It appears that they've lost theirs somewhere along the line. up the Camp 83 story. The camp has been evicted. All the uh, residents of Camp 83 have been housed at least temporarily by Souls of Hope, a charity organization. Housing Our Neighbors, the activist group that was out here today, started back in November, I believe, uh, and this is one of their bigger uh, stories that they were able to help uh, sort of break. Uh, and hopefully they'll be able to roll with this momentum of their solidarity through camp, the Camp 83 experience uh, and maybe a movement will be born in Baltimore, it has already been born and will continue to snowball. So that's going to be it for today's video blog folks. Uh, go ahead and follow uh, the current road trip that I'm on at iontheground.tv. I'm doing a video blog every day of this road trip. I got one more day in Baltimore, then I'm heading over to West Virginia for an environmental activist camp, then down to Oklahoma for another environmental activist camp against the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, so be sure to like and favorite and comment on this video. That helps me a lot. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Take care, folks.